Jack, what did you make of the cup semi-final draw? Um, yeah, it's exciting one. I think we, um, when you look at the other teams that have progressed through to that stage of the tournament, we knew that regardless of the outcome of the draw, it was going to be um, an attractive match and a big match. So um, we've got, you know, arguably probably the biggest one in terms of being a derby. So obviously a lot of football to be played between between now and then, but one will look forward to when it comes around. Do you have a view on whether it could be played? in Edinburgh, at Murrayfield rather than Hamden, is that a conversation that, that might happen? Um, well, I'll take the same part of the question in terms of there being a discussion around it, I don't know. It's obviously the logistics of all that always take place um, at different levels of the club for me. Um, from a football point of view, very simply, it doesn't really bother me where it's played in terms of playing the match and the opportunity to get to the final. Um, I'm only guessing, but I would imagine there's some sort of um, contractual arrangement that the, the, the semi-finals are played at. Hamden Park um, and the company that owns that stadium probably put that in place so that makes things a bit more challenging if you are to change it for whatever reason so you know I think going into the draw you believe that you'll be playing at Hamden um, and told or told otherwise and we'll obviously believe that's the case. Is it the sort of thing that you would discuss with your players would you would you ask their opinions if it, if it came down to a choice? Um, yeah I mean I don't think it will um, I don't think they would bother. I think they'd probably give you the same answer as I've probably given about they would happily play anywhere, any stadium, any pitch. Um, not just because it's a derby, I think, because the Scottish Cup semi final. Um, I think players are, you know, when the game starts, their focus is very much what happens on the pitch as opposed to the surroundings. So I think they'd be fairly relaxed either way. Do you think it, it changes the way the two teams approach tomorrow right now that there's, there's a, another, arguably, even bigger derby coming down the road? and and there's going to be you know, at least another two derbies in this season? Um, no, I, mean, I don't think there's any, any bearing on tomorrow night's match. Um, I think that each individual derby is always a huge match, irrespective of um, how teams are performing or where they are in the league at that point, or whether it's a cup competition and what round of the cup it is. Um, so they'll both mean this has been great because for our preparation for this match, obviously the draw only taking place the day before means it doesn't affect the preparation in any way. Uh, or the mindset, and no, I, I don't think it will have any bearing for any of the players on either side on, on um, either tomorrow's match or the one that will follow, obviously, in a few weeks' time. You must feel like your team are going with a lot of confidence, scoring a lot of goals and, and getting a good, good run of results together at the moment. Yeah, we're in the, the, you know, not the perfect frame of mind because we've not won every single game, but, but you know, a very positive frame of mind because of our um, consistency of performance and consistency of results. and. That's been underpinned by, um, you know, real ability to create and score, particularly since we returned after the winter break. Um, you know, I think we're, I think we're the second highest scorers. I think um, in that time, which is brilliant testament to the to the players embracing that um, freedom, if you like, to go and be creative and be positive. So, we've got to continue to do it. We've got to make sure we keep getting the balance right. But no, there are. They're in a really good place at the moment, and I think it's um, it's nice to go into a match of this magnitude feeling that way. Speaking to, to Paul, he said, "Well, it's maybe not the plan. They do feel like they can score one more than the opposition. Is that is that the confidence that you have in them?" Yeah, I mean, Paul's right to to reference that as it's not. We don't negate. Or sorry, we don't ignore. Sorry, the, the defensive side of the game. We do a lot on it, both from an analysis point of view and on the training pitch. But we put a lot of onus on what we want to do going forward and what we want our creative players to do and our attacking players to do. And as a consequence of that, sometimes you will give up something going the other way. But we believe that we've got a group that, in those types of games, when it becomes open and basketball like almost, that we've got a good chance of coming out on top. And I say it's never always going to happen like that, but at the moment it's going our way. And I said we think the players are enjoying that as well. Hearts have been they play pretty open under Stendhal as well as you know there's been goals at either end there. The RBs are usually pretty tight, they're really, you know, um you know, quite cagey even. Could this be quite a different derby there in the, the way that both these teams have, have been playing going into it? Well it could be and and that you know, points to it being that way. Um the fact it's at all stadium as well with the playing surface is a big stretches the game at times as well. So um, there's a lot of things that would point that way, but as you know with football, there's, it's far from an exact science, so everything can point to a game being a certain way and it be the exact opposite. And ultimately for us, I said this post the game on Boxing Day, it's about making sure you come out the right end of the result. So um, we would like it to be the type of game we've enjoyed playing in recently. If it's not, but we win the game, then who cares?
just having that, that victory in, in Boxing Day and, and, and the, the feeling and experience of going to Tyne Castle and winning the Derby, does that help you guys? Does that give you a little bit extra edge maybe? Um. I mean, possibly, I think that I think there's been a lot of football played since. Um, I would probably point to more of our recent performances and results to to help on us more than that game. At that point, we were still a little bit up and down, or certainly much more up and down than we are now. Um, I think that was in between losing to Rangers at home, where we were poor, and losing to Livingston away, where we were poor, and and so. Although in that game in isolation we did well and came in the right end of the result, we're probably still searching for our best um, form at the time. So I think more so the fact that we're just in such good form, kind of relentless form at the moment, is, is the biggest thing I think to take into the game. Does Hearts win and the way they performed over Rangers, does that change the way you approach them? Do you, did you see any changes maybe in the way that, that Daniel Stenhill had, had, had gone about that? Um, no, not really because we um, were respectful of the opposition regardless of who they are and where they are in the league, whether they're bottom of the league or top of the league. Um, but we do put a lot of emphasis on what we can do. Um, and at the moment we're doing that well. So the bulk of our preparation was already in place. We had a little bit extra time um, post them playing Rangers um, on Saturday evening to, to fine tune that. But um, yeah, as I said, a lot of the stuff for us is about what we want to do in the game and what we believe we've done well recently. Can I ask you if the club's just doing anything extra with the coronavirus stuff, if there's any, or maybe there's been advice passed on from the, from the league or anything that you guys are implementing off your own back? Um, beyond, um, sorry, in terms of the, the broader pitch of the league, not that I'm aware of, but again, that communication I'm sure would go to other people at the club before it reached me. Internally, um, I think the, the guidance has been passed out by the club. Um, via correspondence is pretty much common sense, which is um, wash your hands, which is um, sounds very basic, but is, um, I'm not a medical expert, but I would guess is the best way to stop a lot of spread of infection at any point. Um, and maybe it's just a general reminder to people to have general good hygiene. Um, so I think, you know, I think that's where a lot of the information has been at the moment. And um, it's interesting that because a lot of football clubs now, if you go around their training grounds, have um, a lot of mobile hand sanitizers around training grounds, etc., and um, a lot of reminders to, to wash their hands because there's obviously, from an athletic point of view, you don't want the spread of any sort of infection at any point, whether it be food poisoning, whether it be any sort of any sort of bugs. So, um, yeah, that that advice has been pretty general at the moment. Is that a concern when you see in Italy, obviously games being cancelled and general kind of threat of games maybe having to be placed behind closed doors in the, in, in the future if this continues to spread? Um, yeah, I'm fairly balanced on it. I know we live in a world now where um, we um, we can sometimes take our, our consensus from what appears online, and it seems to be a fluctuation between bordering on the end of the world to something that's not worth bothering about. And usually, the truth is somewhere in between with a lot of these things. Um, so, at the moment, you you continue with your professional and personal life. Um, I think probably the, the one that the, the impact that might have more greatly on, on people in Scotland or players or the football industry in Scotland at the moment is when the international break comes in um, because it's been the potential effect of players travelling to other parts of the world and um, where they've been and where they return. You know, for example, you've got Martin Boyle who, who will go away with Australia and will travel obviously quite far and so that potential knock-on effect to how people are um, looked upon when they return from travelling at certain places is the, I think there's something that the clubs have to be aware of as well. So there's nothing you can do about guys going away on internationals, but is there maybe advice being passed on to guys who would just like to go away and maybe their families or to, or to go home if they're not um, No, I mean, I think that advice would probably be taken for people that have far more expertise than, than me in that regard. Um, and, you know, for the moment, we've um, we've got a pretty busy period that doesn't allow for that anyway. So, um, and I'd imagine they're saving their pennies for the summer holidays in any case. Any team news, Jack? Um, just as we are, obviously the exception of Fraser Murray is back available from suspension, um, which was yeah, it's another different point about being suspended from a red card in the reserve game. But he's back available. Joe Newell still unavailable, still recovering from his foot injury. Um, the long term ones are obviously still unavailable. But other than that, we're we're, um, we're healthy.